I first learned about quantum mechanics when I was in my last year of high school. And our teacher gave us some popular books about this theory. And I was fascinated by the story about the, the theory itself, about the mysteries and paradoxes as they were presented. Then, by pure chance, I have to say, I went to a university in, uh, yes, in Trieste. And there uh, I had Giancarlo Girardi as professor in quantum mechanics. And it was a very fortunate event because uh, he's one of the world leaders in quantum foundation. He's an excellent teacher. And he really raised the interest of students in this uh, topic. So I decided to uh, have my thesis with him and then to work with him during my PhD. And it's there where I learned about quantum mechanics. And I also learned that quantum mechanics is, is a bit less mysterious than what people usually present in textbooks. That's not easy to answer because I do believe uh, at the end that quantum theory is a phenomenological theory of an underlying description of nature yet to be discovered. So in this precise sense, one could say that I don't believe in quantum mechanics. But still, I mean, we have some glimpses of what a good quantum theory could be about. And the best one for me is a collapse model, a field theoretical description of uh, nature, and in particular of matter, which is mathematically given by the wave function, which anyway finds a consistent representation in uh, space-time as the matter waves, which uh, fluctuate and divide and then reunite as, uh, according to the obstacles they reach during their motion. And I think it's a very consistent, satisfactory description. Number two, actually very close to number one, is also Bohmian mechanics, which I do believe is a, a very fully consistent and clear description of all natural phenomena, at least at a non-relativistic level. No, I do not think that randomness plays any special role in quantum theory. And I take the example of collapse models, which is the one I'm most familiar with. There, there is a stochastic field, but it's a normal random field. And then all the quantum randomness arrays because of this field, all the peculiar properties, I don't know, the Born rule, for example, emerge from the form of the equation. And basically, that's it. It's just a random field that causes the dynamics of the system, that contributes to the dynamical evolution of physical systems. But inequalities teach us that nature is non-local, so there is not much to do. What we do here can influence instantaneously what happens elsewhere. And that we have to live, because that's an experimental fact. But then poses a problem with relativity, because relativity is strongly against such kind of uh, influences. And that's one of the big problems in quantum foundations. I would say that, at, at least in a very weak sense, every physicist is a kind of a philosopher because everyone has an attitude towards natural sciences and how the job should be done or not be done. But then, when a physicist really is educated in philosophy, then he can become more conscious about what nature, sh what the theory, I would say, more than nature, should tell us about the physical world, what can tell us, what cannot tell us, and so, Philosophy can guide a physicist in understanding nature better and possibly in improving theories or writing down better theories. As I mentioned before, one of the most challenging problems is how to accommodate non-locality exemplified by Bell inequalities within a special and then possibly general relativity. This is the big tension between quantum mechanics and relativity, which is not fully resolved so far. But from my point of view, again, as I said before, the major problem is to derive the underlying theory, the true, whatever that means, or the deeper level, the better theory, out of which quantum mechanics emerges as a phenomenological theory. Morally, and only morally, pretty much in the same way in which thermodynamics emerges from classical mechanics as a st 
statistical theory that no one knows how to do that. It's a dream so far. 